Mellish Engineering have recently just purchased three new stars, three new SR32Js. Now, it was only you know, not long ago that you were manufacturing some of these subsea nuts and bolts on the manual capstans. Now, can you take me through this journey, please, Chris? So, yeah, on, what we used to do, we produce stuff either on manual capstans or automatic MMX, which in, some, in most cases usually took uh, two machines to produce one part. Um, which obviously took a lot of time and a lot of labour to produce that. Um, and with the stars now, we obviously reduce the cycle times and can produce one complete part on one machine. Uh, and obviously we can run the machines, uh, lights out as well. And how has the transition been? So, I mean, there's a big transition from using a manual piece of equipment to using a state-of-the-art piece of equipment. How have you found this? Yeah, generally it's been pretty easy. We, we started with just the one uh, SR20. Um, and built up from there, we built up our skill base, um, obviously with, with more employees and whatnot. Um, and we, we found that the training up with the people who used to do the capstans and um, uh, automatic MMX obviously was a lot easier because we already had the base knowledge of how to produce the part anyway. It was just the basic sort of knowledge on how to set and run the star itself. So how many stars do you have in total now? We have seven stars. In total, we have uh, one SR20, five SR32Js, and one uh, SR32J Type N. So you're making some of the same components. So you know, I'd like to look at some uh, and do some comparison. So if you had to give me, a, you know, a typical cycle time saving, what would that be? Well, you, you, you're talking uh, minutes. Uh, for a single sort of small M8 cap screw, we're obviously producing probably a cap screw on a capstan and an MMA in probably five, ten minutes each component. Now we're down to less than two minutes, a minute and a half or so. So with the capstan, in my opinion, they've always and we always will have a, a place in the market. However, as you mentioned, they are labour intensive and and they do require a lot of setup times. Now. With this new star, has it kind of eradicated most of your setup times? Yes, definitely. On some cases, if there's diff obviously different lengths in the order that we've got, um, it's a lot easier to just to change that over. It takes minutes to seconds even to change that over um, and keep running the job um, to whatever we need. So what are you saying? So you've got the 32 mil capacity. Could you potentially run different part numbers with the same bar and just swap the programs yeah in some cases yeah so it might just case of changing maybe one collet or, uh, or a couple of tools maybe but generally yes we can we have produced uh, different uh, parts from the same bar uh, on the same machine and you know let's talk about quality now you know obviously if, if you've got a good operator you'll get a quality part but there are a lot of variables now, in regards to quality now on the star, how have you found this quality, the repeatability, the standard of the parts, the tolerances that you need to hold? Yeah, generally pretty good. Um, we, we, we use um, the quality bar that we get. Uh, as long as we've got quality uh, collets to put in and everything's, everything's good and using reasonable tools, um, we do find that everything else is bang on. Um, no, generally no issues with the machine at all. Now, touching on tooling, I mean, has it increased? Does it give you better tool life? And, and have you got the rigidity on this star? You know, you use it, you, you're cutting tough materials for the subsea industry. So, you know, what, firstly, are you getting better tool life? And secondly, how is it coping with the tough materials? Yeah, the machine itself copes really well. Um, we, we, we do sort of uh, set the programs and we too, do tend to know what sort of speeds and feeds to put in for obviously the hard materials like your ink canals and your duplexes. Um, and we, we, we optimise those the best we can, but compared to obviously doing it manually, we do get a lot more tool life. And have you saved lots of operations as well on certain parts? Because obviously now you've got milling capability as on a capstan you didn't. Yeah, exactly. So if we're producing sort of a hexagon screw, we can, like I say, we can produce that complete, even with the etching on, milled, packed, ready to go. And one trans uh, transition, sorry, you know, is, is, is the programming. Now, this is probably new to yourselves and, and for someone that's come from a manual machine to a CNC machine, and especially when it's a multi-axis machine like the SR32J, how have people found this? Generally pretty good. We've got a couple of um, trainees on here at the present moment in time and they've picked it up really well. Um, and talking to myself, I've picked it up re reasonably well as well. Um, but as long as, you, like I said uh, earlier, 
uh, to yourself. It, it, as long as you've got a basic engineering background, the, the program is pretty easy. And with the software that you can get from Star as well, that makes life a little bit easier as well.